Hi there, Claire Winslow here, and just wanted to show you today one way of using your gel plate that is different from uh, what's often shown on YouTube. This one's a more painterly approach, and um, if you like painting, I think you'll really like it. And even if you aren't a painter, give it a try, because you might really enjoy this, the new way of uh, using your gel plate. So hope you enjoy watching, and uh, check out my other videos for lots of ways to use your gel paint and make good art at home. Hi, Claire Winslow here, um, showing you another approach to using your gel plate. This is a painterly approach that's really fun once you wrap your head around it. And um, if you've done some gel printing before, you might enjoy this. It's a departure from the usual way of using your gel plate. As you can see, I'm setting up on the side here with a little piece of plexiglass. Um, and that's just a area for rolling out paint. And we're going to be using regular acrylics today. This is that little piece of paper is a gouache painting that I'm using as kind of inspiration. And um, we're going to be painting from dark to light and from front to back. So here we have uh, just some regular uh, craft paint, sort of high-end craft paint that I'm trying out. And I've skipped a step in the video here, but I just want to show you what I did with it. I painted black on the gel plate, and I am deliberately letting that dry. Again, it's to get this effect of trees, darkness in the front, and lightness in the back. And after I let that black dry, and I let, let it sit for about an hour, you could use a blow dryer if you'd like to. We're not supposed to use that with the gel plate, but I sometimes do. So you can tell that black is fully dry because it's not shiny. And now we're going to paint another layer on top of the black. And um, I'm using my plexiglass to mix some paint on the side. Here's where you can switch to just some basic craft brushes and mix the color that you'd like. And we're going to be painting on top of the black trees. So you got to think sort of backwards. We're going from front to back or from dark to light. And so the trees will be in the front and the lighter colors will be in the back. So now I'm painting uh, one of the lighter colors on top of the dried trees. And if I'm gentle with my brush, I'm not going to disturb that dried black paint at all. Just be careful to be kind of gentle with it. So I'm just uh, not going to think too much. I'm just going to use some yellow, maybe a little bit of blue. I'll list the colors in the description for the videos if you for the video if you want to know exactly what colors I used. And so just trying to loosely um, suggest some sky back there, and you'll see what we get in a minute. I know sometimes if you've just seen this for the first time, it's hard to figure out what I'm doing. But um, everything is going to be in reverse. And we're going to intentionally let all of these paint colors dry on the plate. And then we're going to pull them all up onto our paper. So um, if you enjoy painting, you'll like this. And um, it's even if you're not sure, if you haven't painted before, this might be a fun thing to try. You can. Uh, draw something, paint something realistic, you can paint abstractly and just have fun with marks. But the point is you're letting everything dry on purpose. So now I'm just kind of trying to get a variety of colors a little bit so it's not all one. And like I said, I'm covering all the surfaces. So I'm covering the trees, I'm covering the blank parts of the gel plate. And I'm just trying to suggest some sky with some color in the background there and probably move a little bit light to dark from top to bottom. We're doing a little bit of color mixing there to mix the colors we have already, the yellow and the blue. And we're moving down to the middle of the plate, trying to put some, insert some different colors in there. That's my cat. Okay, go away. Shh. And then as we go down on the gel plate, um, we'll get a little bit greener. And those are just decisions that I've made on the, on the fly. You can do anything you want. I'm not trying to copy that picture that I showed you, but just use it as a starting point. 
And I've switched brushes to a bigger, flatter brush here because I just wanted to get some, you know, nice big areas and not get too fussy with it. So I've switched to more of a Viridian green and some stronger colors here to suggest, I guess, some kind of forest. And um, just trying to fill all the gaps because um, we want all the plate to be covered with paint. And you'll see why in a minute. So even where there's some gaps where the trees are showing, I want to cover that too because those black areas might not be fully opaque. So I need to have some, I'd like to have some color behind them. And as I get down close to the bottom, I'm adding a little more ultramarine blue and um, maybe we'll mix some darker green as we get very close to the bottom. So I've got a touch of black here, which I'm gonna mix with my green just to get a kind of a grayed out color and uh, near the bottom. So we're almost done. And this is looking pretty good. I left a few areas open and I guess that'll be okay. You don't have to rush with this because like I said, you're letting it dry on purpose. Okay, looks good. Now we've let it dry. I've um, let that dry at least an hour, maybe two, and I've come back to it. And now I'm going to use my brayer to just apply a light color. In this case, it's a buff color. You could use white, you could use uh, light blue, anything you like, but um, I've decided to use a light color. The main thing is you want to apply it on a nice, thin but generous layer of acrylic on the plate and you're going to use your brayer to cover, make sure it's covered completely. I'm just cleaning off my brayer there a little bit and getting ready to apply the paper. I'm using a cardstock here because you don't want a thin, you can't use thin printer paper for this copy paper. That won't work so well. If you want a decent weight of paper, uh, like a cardstock, you could use printmaking paper too if you have that, but cardstock from Staples or an office supply store is fine. It needs to be pretty sturdy though because um, it's going to hold a lot of paint on there. And I was spending a, time, a few minutes, well, about a minute trying to really work the paint into the paper because you're getting the wet layer to um, engage with the dry layer and by the way I let this sit um, overnight and you don't have to let it sit that long but I got called away so I let the paper sit on the wet paint um, for several hours and as you can see here we have our finished print which is really kind of like a painting. If you like the rough edges, the rough quality of that, um, you should try this technique and let us know how you how you do.